हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल गैमा डाई गैमा सो इन दिस वीडियो आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस एन इंटीरियर लेट आई कवर्ड इन द लास्ट वीडियो बट ऑब्वियसली आई एम गोन यूज अ डिफरेंट टेक्निक अदरवाइज इट वुड बी द सेम वीडियो एज लास्ट टाइम सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट question like last time let's call it i is integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative n x squared cosine of alpha x dx okay unlike last time i'm not going to use leibniz's uh rule for solving this integral what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the cosine as the real part of the exponential function e to the i alpha x dx because we all know that um e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta and when we take the real part of this we forget the i sine theta okay fair enough so i can just try to regroup some terms in the exponent of e we have x squared minus i alpha x over n dx now i'm going to try to complete the square e to the negative n x minus i alpha over 2n the whole thing squared plus alpha squared over 4n squared and of course a dx so i'm going to take this uh, part which is independent of x outside the integral so i have e to the negative alpha squared over 4n times the real part of this integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative n x minus i alpha over 2n the whole thing squared dx okay and now in case you're the you're the curious intrepid type you may try substituting like say like u is equal to x minus i alpha over 2n in, into this but the problem is you'll end up with a minus i alpha over 2n and infinity minus i alpha over 2n in the limits of integration and there is a slight problem when we do that i mean this almost looks like a gaussian integral but it's not quite it's this has this extra shifting factor of i alpha over 2n so we need to be a little more careful and we need to work in the complex plane we need to do some serious complex analysis i mean i'm sure if you're like an engineer or even like a an applied physicist you may be used to just writing this as the gaussian integral e to the negative nx squared dx and call it the shifting of contours but i'm going to actually do this the the whole sum way the the, the complete way i'm not going to skip any steps so let's take this on a fresh page just this guy Uh, I don't know. Let's call this I one maybe. Let's take this on a fresh page. See you there. Okay, so as discussed earlier, this is I one, which we're gonna actually investigate more deeply. Okay, so for our convenience, let's define f of z to be the integrand of the Ga Gaussian integral, so e to the negative n z squared, and as is common with most comp most integrals solved with complex analysis on this channel at least. we we have to define a contour of integration so i've defined the contour to be this way so uh, so the direction of integration uh is is going to be this way this clockwise manner as indicated in the arrows so now the contour integration goes like this contour integral of f of z dz is going to be 
uh, first dispatch from zero to R, the top one. And since on that's that's just the real axis, Z is gonna equal X on that patch. So we have integral from zero to R e to the negative n x squared dx fine and then on this patch the the real part is always going to be r and the imaginary part is going to be a variable so ju just on this patch this patch that's going down z is going to equal r plus i y and when i make that substitution i end up with i times integral from zero y is zero here and then here it's negative i alpha over 2, actually i alpha over 2 and after uh, this, this substitution has been done. And then uh, the function is going to be negative n, z was r plus i y, the whole thing squared, dy. Okay, and then then it's going to be this this patch over here so that's going to be uh, integral from r to 0 and on this patch z is going to be uh, x minus i alpha over 2n because on this patch the imaginary part will be fixed at alpha over 2n and x will be a variable we have e to the negative n x minus i alpha over 2n squared dx and then is, is the top portion and on the top portion z is equal to 0 plus i y because the real component will just be 0 so using that substitution with i times integral from minus alpha over 2n to 0 e to the negative n i y squared dy okay and all of this is simply equal to 0 by Co Cauchy's integration formula because there are there are no residues otherwise the contour integral of of a holomorphic function like f of z on a closed contour like this is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of residues but since this function e to the negative n x z squared has no residues on this i mean the only time this function goes to zero is when z approaches infinity so in an absence of any poles the residues are zero and we just have a zero here so I would just like to isolate this term, this first term over here. So integral from zero to r of, actually, actually I won't isolate the first term, I would isolate this, this term over here. Uh, this term, so when it goes on the other side, it's gonna get a negative, the negative can be used to flip the order of integration. So integral from 0 to r e to the negative n x minus i alpha over 2n squared dx and um, fine and then that's equal to all of this junk which is integral from 0 to r e to the negative n x squared dx. and um, plus i times integral from minus alpha over 2n to 0 of e to the well i squared is negative 1 so this will just be ny squared dy and then I'm going to take a minus here because I want to flip the upper and lower bounds of integration integral from minus alpha over 2n to 0 of e to the negative n r plus i y squared dy fine that's what we have and now notice uh, if we take the limit 
as as r approaches infinity on both sides this just becomes integral from 0 to infinity of this function which is precisely this function that we had over here so integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative n x minus i alpha over 2n squared dx is equal to integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative n x squared dx and now notice if you take the limit as r goes to infinity you you're going to end up with a with an argument of the exponential that's getting really really large and then exponential is going to decay like crazy you can check that out by you know basically break like expanding this square in the exponent and you end up with zero so and the other term you're left with is i times integral from minus alpha over 2n to 0 e to the n y squared dy now i1 was just the real part of this guy so just take the real part on both sides so this becomes i1 and the real part of this expression well this is just the gaussian integral which we know has a real value of i'm going to write that down so the gaussian integral in this case is incomplete because it's from 0 to infinity and then it's going to have a value of square root of pi over n square root of n for this n that was outside that's the value of this and then this guy e to the n y squared is, is a real integrand evaluated on a real interval of integration so that's a real that's a, some real term some real constant term after evaluation times this this iota this imaginary part so real times this i is always going to be purely imaginary so when we take the real part of this entire expression we're going to ignore this so which 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 is just this integral over here which we found out to be the half gaussian integral e to the negative n x squared dx i've made an entire playlist on defeating the gaussian integral so you might want to check that out and this is actually the the more formal the the more wholesome way of showing that this guy is equal to the gaussian integral and therefore you can say that you know if instead of i, I alpha over 2 and there was some other factor we would have still ended up with you know a similar method a similar approach and a similar answer maybe even the same answer i think 90 percent of the times and this is what is called the shifting of contour methods that engineers and applied physicists might have learned in their courses you know to just tackle problems quickly because every time you you don't need to do this otherwise it just waste time and then our original integral i was just e to the negative alpha squared over 4n times i1 which just turns out to be e to the negative alpha squared over 4n the factor of half and square root of pi over n and that's precisely the answer we had with the other method of uh, Feynman technique or, or Leibniz rule so I hope you enjoyed this video and th thoroughly understood this wholesome process of doing contour integration and then you know defining the contour in such a way i mean the only reason i i took i took the con contour to be a rectangle with with uh with breadth of alpha over 2n was because there was this alpha i alpha over 2n factor in this otherwise usually what we do is we take a, a semicircular contour and some semicircles are excellent to work with on the complex plane especially for you know int integrals like that because then you can use many lemmas you can use jordan's lemma you can use uh, estimation lemma bunch of other things so yeah we're done so please like should subscribe to my channel guys if you enjoyed this video uh recommend me to your friends in the math community uh stay home stay safe keep doing math and peace out until next time